Once we've built some sequential logic designs, we're going to want to test them. The test benches we design aren't too different from the ones we've used in the past, as we've been procedurally applying test vectors since Lab 203. In this short screencast, we're going to take a look at specific test bench constructs for sequential Verilog, such as clocks, state initialization, and specifying run lengths. This is some example test bench code for the simple D-type flip-flop presented in the previous screencast. All it does is set up the clock and the device under test, and toggle the input a couple of times. We'll go through the different blocks and examine what they're doing. First off, we declare the input and output variables for the device under test. Inputs are registers, and outputs are wires. There's no real difference here from when testing combinational logic. From the previous screencast, we now know that we declare the inputs as registers as they are manipulated in the initial block, and procedural assignment cannot be performed on wires. The main difference in this test bench is the inclusion of this always block, which is where we set up the clock which will drive our circuit. Unlike other always blocks, this one doesn't have a sensitivity list. This makes it functionally similar to a while one loop in C or C++. This type of always block is exclusive to simulations as it's not synthesizable to hardware. The code within the block causes the clock register to toggle every 10 time units. This generates a clock of period t clock, where t clock is equal to the specified delay multiplied by the test bench's time unit divided by 2. Therefore, the frequency of the clock is equal to 2 divided by the delay times the time unit. Finally, although it seems like a minor thing, it's actually quite important. We put the delay before the toggle to avoid a race condition with any clock initialization values at time zero, as we wouldn't want to be setting and toggling the clock on the same tick. We now come to a block we recognize from combinational logic test benches, the initial block. As we know, the initial block sets the initial state for signals at time zero, but by using delays we can also get it to sequentially apply our test vectors. The first thing we do is initialize the clock signal to zero. This gives the clock register a defined value before the first inversion after 10 time units, as defined by the always block. We then go on to set our test vectors. Your delays between test vectors should be at least two times the delay time of the clock signal. This ensures both a positive and negative edge of the clock occur during each test vector. The final thing we do is instantiate our device under test. There's no difference here to doing the same for sequential logic designs. In some of our designs, there may not be specific vectors that we wish to test. For example, we might want to see how a counter operates over a certain period of time. We therefore need to add a delay in our initial block to define how long the simulation should run for before calling the stop function. This delay should be a multiple of our clock period, to make sure that we're not cutting out anything mid-clock transition.